Hello everyone, my name is Kate Bennett and I'm the board chair for the National Women's Hall of Fame. This evening, we will induct six amazing women who have shaped our nation. To educate us about the achievements of these great women, we will hear from experts, family members, and students from all over the United States. The student essays you will hear tonight were chosen from a group of essays submitted by students throughout the upstate New York area. Although only a few were chosen to be read tonight, all submitted essays will be available on our website. Tonight, our ceremony will be led by Dr. Deborah Turner, president of the League of Women Voters. Dr. Turner is an extraordinary woman. She has practiced gynecologic oncology for 35 years, participated in 12 medical missions to Tanzania, and received her JD from Drake University in 2007, all while being an active leader for the League of Women Voters. Thank you, Dr. Turner, for agreeing to be the leader of ceremonies to induct six incredible women tonight. Hello, and welcome to the inaugural virtual induction ceremony for the National Women's Hall of Fame. I am Dr. Deborah Turner, president of the League of Women Voters, and I will be your leader of ceremonies tonight. On behalf of the National Women's Hall of Fame, we are so delighted to have you all attending this historic virtual ceremony. Tonight, we are making history by honoring great women that, have, that were deceased prior to the founding of the National Women's Hall of Fame, overlooked in their lifetime, or passed away before they were able to be inducted. Tonight, we'll feature speakers who tell the stories of these six outstanding women who have paved new ways, revolutionized the way we think, and left le legacies that are still felt generations later. Although this 2020 class of inductees are no longer with us today, their family and friends will be joining us to share their stories and accept the awards in their honor. Their legacies will always be a part of the hall where we will display their achievements forevermore. Tonight's ceremony will be the first of many in the virtual induction series. We begin the series with the induction of six prominent black women who have shaped our nation. These inductees were nominated by the general public and were judged by an external panel of experts. With help from more public nominations, the continuation of the virtual induction series will shed light on and honor the diverse historic women who have been instrumental in achieving accomplishments that continue to lift up all women. With this first step, the National Women's Hall of Fame is engaging in an ongoing process of learning, educating, and honoring the women throughout our nation's history to whom we are indebted. And now, before we jump in and begin tonight's ceremony, I would like to welcome Amanda Minna, America's Got Talent season 13 semifinalist who will be singing the national anthem. Her vocals will be accomplished by the video vote created by Elizabeth Marsden. Whose broad stripes in bright stars 
Hi, I'm New York Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, and thank you for inviting me to participate in this evening's induction ceremony. I'd like to acknowledge League of Women Voters President Deborah Turner, President of the Board of Directors of the National Women's Hall of Fame, Kate Bennett, and Dr. Angela Davis, inductee, ambassador, author, and activist. While we can't wait to turn the calendar page on 2020, a year of extraordinary upheaval, pandemically, politically, socially, economically, what cannot be overlooked is that 2020 is also the year we celebrated the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. And befittingly, it was the year when our nation righted one of the greatest wrongs of the past and elected the first woman and the first woman of color to the second highest office in the land. Yes, truly an historic year. As chair of the New York State Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission, I devoted considerable effort to uncovering and sharing the often unacknowledged contributions of black women, women who experience society's rejection by virtue of being both black and female, women who stood shoulder to shoulder with their white counterparts to correct an injustice that emanated all the way back to our founding fathers, yet who would not be fully guaranteed those very rights until the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and they never received the just credit they deserved. Their legacies need to be enshrined and honored. And that is what this virtual induction series accomplishes. I've long participated in the National Women's Hall of Fame ceremonies and commend them for honoring trailblazing women from all walks of life. Each of this year's inductees are truly special. Six black women who have helped shape and define our nation. But I am particularly pleased to see the inclusion of suffragist and civil rights activist Mary Church Terrell, who along with past induct inductees, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, and Mary Talbert, paved the long road to the right to vote, sharing their stories and the incredible legacies of the other trailblazers being honored today puts these women into the spotlight they rightfully deserve. This will inspire girls and women all across the nation. In what has been the most transformational year in our entire lifetimes, we honor these bold women by continuing in their footsteps to foster the cause of equality, justice, and inclusion. As always, I'm proud of New York's place in history as the birthplace of the women's rights movement and the home of the National Women's Hall of Fame. I will always continue to support this organization and appreciate all you've done to recognize outstanding women of the past and empower outstanding women of the future. Thank you. This event, the, search, the virtual induction series, comes at a pivotal moment in history. We just celebrated the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. Our country has experienced a summer of reawakening and acknowledging issues around social justice. And on top of it all, we are fighting a global pandemic. This year, which has been tumultuous and sometimes heartbreaking, has also given us reason to celebrate. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris is prepared to be the first woman of color to ascend to one of the highest offices in our country. While the League of Women Voters nor the National Women's Hall of Fame ever endorse candidates or parties, we all celebrate the election of a woman to the vice presidency because we cannot deny the historic significance of this moment. The National Women's Hall of Fame's history is intertwined with the history of the fight for the women's right to vote. The hall is located in Seneca Falls, New York, the birthplace of the American women's rights movement. Here in 1848, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Lucretia Mott, and 300 other women and men held the first women's rights convention. 72 years later, in 1920, the 19th Amendment was ratified, which gave many women the right to vote, but not throughout all of our country. The 19th Amendment prohibited discrimination on the basis of sex, but it did not address other kinds of discrimination that many American women faced. Women from non-majority communities were excluded on the basis of both gender and race. Native Americans, Asian American, Latinx, and Black suffragists like Mary Church Terrell, who we will be honoring today, had to fight for their own enfranchisement a long time after the 19th Amendment was ratified. Only over successive years did each of those groups gain access to the ballot. The League of Women Voters, an organization that I have been involved with for the last 10 years plus, has a history similar to that of the National Women's Hall of Fame. 
the league believes in the power of women to create a more perfect democracy. That's been our vision since 1920, when the League of Women Voters was founded by leaders of the women's suffrage movement. For 100 years, we have been a nonpartisan activist grassroots organization that believes voters should play the most critical part in democracy. At the League of Women Voters, we are celebrating the all-time high voter turnout and the extraordinary dedication of our poll workers, GOTV volunteers, election workers, and postal workers who fought against all odds to make this election successful and secure. Exactly 100 years after some women won the right to vote, America has elected a woman to serve in the White House. As we celebrate this historic accomplishment, we can hear the voices of the past still resonate today. The joyful cheers of suffragists, particularly our heroines of color who continued to fight for our rights after the 19th Amendment was passed, and the cries of victory from civil rights workers who fought, bled, and died for the right to vote, many of whom were women whose voices were not always acknowledged. We also hear the voices of the present, millions of voters, the majority of whom are women, are celebrating this year because they prove that America still believes in democracy and the importance of letting every voice be elevated against all odds, even in this year of COVID. Having a woman of color in the White House will leave its mark on generations of young women. It also has the potential to help all people, no matter their gender identity, to look more deeply and differently at individuals whose role in this country of our nation, <laughs> history of our nation has for so long been overlooked, denied, taken for granted or downplayed. This is the, precisely what the National Women's Hall of Fame hopes to do with the virtual induction series, to tell the stories of and honor those that have been historically excluded or forgotten from our conversations. While the women we are honoring tonight are no longer with us, it is not too late to tell their stories and update our narrative on women's rights. It is now my honor to induce our featured speaker this evening as she is someone who is no stranger to challenging the existing narrative, Dr. Angela Davis. Through her activism and scholarship over many decades, Angela Y. Davis has been deeply involved in movements for social justice around the world. Her work as an educator, both at the university level and in the larger public sphere, has always emphasized the importance of building communities of struggle for economic, racial, and gender justice. Dr. Davis' teaching career has taken her to numerous college campuses across the United States. She has also given lectures in Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and South America. She spent 15 years at the University of California, Santa Cruz, where she is now a distinguished professor emerita of history of consciousness and feminist studies. Dr. Davis will act as our National Women's Hall of Fame ambassador. She was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame this past year in 2019, has served as a wonderful ambassador for the hall ever since. She will introduce all of our inductees this evening and tell us in her own words, the importance of the National Women's Hall of Fame and what it means to be an inductee. Welcome, Dr. Angela Davis. My name is Angela Davis, and it was an immense honor to be inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame last year, as it is to introduce the extraordinary women who are being inducted this year. My own scholarly work has sought in part to render visible, pivotal contributions of Black women and other women of color to the quest for women's equality, as it has emphasized the intellectual contributions of blues women, as well as women, men, and trans persons in prison. And so I am especially happy that this year, the year of collective recognition of structural racism in the midst of a global pandemic, the year in which millions of people recognize that when Black Lives Matter, all lives will finally matter, the National Women's Hall of Fame induction ceremony includes six Black women, Mary Church Terrell, Henrietta Lacks, Barbara Rose Johns, Toni Morrison, Barbara Hillary, and Aretha Franklin.
On August 20th, 2020, we celebrated 100 years since the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which gave women the right to vote, although black women in their majority could not exercise this right until the passage of the Voting Rights Act in 1965. This right so long sought after endures today because of the women who struggled to achieve it. However, when the 19th Amendment is celebrated today, it is too often only white women who are recognized for their achievements, despite the fact that many women of color fought for this right as well. Mary Church Terrell was one of those outstanding women. She was one of the most important suffragists because she recognized that in order for all women to be enfranchised, patriarchy and racism had to be simultaneously challenged. Mary Church Terrell and other black suffragists like Anna Julia Cooper and Ida B. Wells urged white women to join them in standing up against post-Civil War racism as they organized for women's right to vote. This message continues to resonate today. Next, reading an excerpt from the book, Unceasing Militant, The Life of Mary Church Terrell is Dr. Allison Parker. Dr. Parker is Chair and Richards Professor of American History, Co-Chair of the Anti-Racism Initiative, and holds a joint appointment in Women and Gender Studies at the University of Delaware. Hello, today I'm honored to share a brief excerpt from the conclusion of Unceasing Militant. Mary Church Terrell was a prominent activist with over 60 years of fighting for African Americans and women's rights. She created a distinctive black feminist voice that centered the protection of black women, offering them hope and even using joy and humor as a way to inspire their activism. She imagined more for her race and her gender and articulated that vision as she battled the forces of intolerance. In the political arena, Terrell championed democracy and condemned white supremacy at home and abroad. She was, as Paul Robeson characterized her, an unceasing militant struggling for the full citizenship of her people. Terrell's life history matters today. It shows us what real activism looks like. Social justice is often slow, continuous, and undramatic. It requires perseverance and dedication, even when there are no signs of progress. Terrell suffered private, personal setbacks, but hardly a week went by during her adult life when she did not attend more than one organizational event or civil rights meeting, often several on the same day. A persistent Terrell never gave up hope. She was sometimes demanding and critical of others who were not as ready for persistent struggle. But by constantly showing up and participating in discussions about reform priorities and tactics, by understanding the way certain issues needed to be elevated at particular historical moments, and by participating in the long arc of activism, Terrell provided leadership and perspective. She also encouraged and inspired younger generations. Thank you. Reading her essay about Mary Church Terrell is Sophie Palladino from Minders Academy in Seneca Falls. Mary Church Terrell is an important historical figure and an inspiration to so many people. She inspired many young women, including myself. She is an inspiration to me because of all her efforts in women's suffrage and racial equality. She helped found an organization in 1896 called the National Association of Colored Women, where she was the NACW president from 1896 to 1901. Her efforts while she was part of that organization helped make a difference. She campaigned among black organizations and mainstream white organizations, and she actively fought for women's suffrage. She fought tirelessly for these because she realized that she belonged to the only group in our country that had to overcome huge obstacles concerning sex and race. I think this is so important, and one of the biggest reasons that she inspires me is because of all her actions for equal rights. Hello. On behalf of the Terrell Langston family, and especially on behalf of my husband, Raymond Langston, who has shared Mary Church Terrell's life story 
to the wider public over many years. Monique, Raymond, and I are proud to be here today. We acknowledge, accept, and personally celebrate the induction of Mary Church Terrell into the National Women's Hall of Fame. During this year, the 150th anniversary of the 14th Amendment and the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, it's fitting to celebrate Mary Church Terrell's advocacy of full citizenship rights for African-American women and men. This year, the power of the black vote is more clear than ever with the election of the first black woman as vice president-elect. In so many ways, Mary Church Terrell's work has borne a powerful harvest. As Allison Parker's new biography states, born in 1863 on the cusp of slavery and freedom, Mary Church Terrell became a foundational figure in the black freedom struggle, embodying what she termed dignified agitation. <laughs> her temperament and bearing announced her pride in being both an African American and a woman. Asserting her full humanity, Terrell maintained her determined optimism for a better future throughout her long and productive life. Thank you again for recognizing and honoring the remarkable life of my grandmother, Mary Church Terrell. Henrietta Lacks is known as the woman whose cancer cells originate the HeLa line, which has been used extensively in medical research since the 1950s. But Henrietta Lacks' legacy is so much more than that. It illustrates the structural racism embedded in U.S. medical research and in our system of health care. Her induction 50 years after her death sheds light on these systemic disparities and gives Lux the recognition she and her family were systematically denied. Now a few words from Dr. Adele Newsom Horst, Vice President and Chair of the Board of Directors at the Henrietta Lacks Legacy Group. Greetings from Baltimore County, Maryland. I am a proud member of the Henrietta Lacks Legacy Group, the nonprofit organization that nominated Mrs. Lacks to the National Women's Hall of Fame. On behalf of our founder and president, Servant Courtney Speed, and our board of directors, I wish to thank the Hall of Fame for this very important recognition. I first met Jerry Lax and the rest of the family at the Morgan State University commencement exercise in 2011. At that time, Mrs. Lax was posthumously awarded the doctorate degree of public service. In the late 1970s, the BBC traveled to Turner Station, Maryland in search of Henrietta Lax and they found longtime resident Speed. In 2011, Speed went to Morgan State University to test the best impulses of higher education. That is, she wanted to collaborate with university faculty and staff on a project. More specifically, the project was to combat the erasure of Mrs. Lacks and that of historic Turner Station. Subsequently, the Henrietta Lacks Legacy Group was established and adopted as its primary mission uh, the goal of extending the legacy of Mrs. Lacks and that of historic Turner Station where Lacks lived at the time of her death. Many of the organization's plans were hindered in 2020 by the COVID pandemic. But this recognition has given us renewed vigor, vigor to continue our mission in 2021. As one of my students wrote, 
Mrs. Lex should be listed in history as someone who has made life better for everyone. There should be buildings, streets, monuments, and parks named for her. I agree. Thank you. Reading her essay about Henrietta Lacks is Madeline Verke from Minders Academy in Seneca Falls. Henrietta Lacks left an impact on medicine that can be used to save lives for decades to come. Her research for immortal HeLa cells is still relevant in finding cures for today's diseases. She inspires me to help other people just like she did. She set a perfect example for people like myself to devote time to making a difference in this world. Henrietta Lacks' story started the conversation of ethics and decency in the medical field. This inspires me to bring up conversations of things I find need to be talked about more that would otherwise be left alone. Her legacy will forever leave an impact on medicine and can also be used to inspire others everywhere. Greetings, my name is Jerry Lex Y, and I'm the granddaughter of Henrietta Lex. My father, David Sonny Lex, is Henrietta's middle son. On behalf of myself and my family, we would like to extend our sincerest gratitude for such a great honor that has been given to our beloved Henrietta Lex. Henrietta Lex continues to save lives, she continues to give life, and she continues to advance science. Um, for the past five years, the Henrietta Lacks Legacy Group has worked diligently to have Henrietta inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. With their persistence and their determination, it happened. Henrietta is among five other women that will be inducted into the 2020 National Women's Hall of Fame. Five other phenomenal queens, you know? This is a great honor. You know, words can't express how grateful, how proud, how humble her family is for this prestigious award. Um, and we had to just celebrated her 100th birthday on August the 1st, 2020. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that we had a, a grand celebration for her birthday. So we had a virtual symposium, which was a success. Um, and we will continue to tell her story. We will continue to celebrate her life and her legacy. And I just want to thank everyone for um, for their support to the Lax family, for their um, willingness to continue to tell Her Henrietta's story, their willingness to educate and bring awareness to Henrietta's major contributions to science. Um, and just, you know, thank everyone Continue to be blessed, um, stay healthy, stay safe to the National Women's Hall of Fame. Please continue to do great work to honor our phenomenal women worldwide. Thank you and be blessed. At ITT, our commitment to making a difference in this world goes beyond manufacturing. We strive to continuously learn from each other by valuing different ideas, opinions, and experiences, and we know that equity and inclusion contributes to a positive and purposeful work environment. We're proud to be a founding sponsor of the National Women's Hall of Fame and especially excited to be a part of this evening's induction and celebration of six extraordinary women. For more information on ITT, please visit our website at ITT.com. Thank you. If history has taught us anything, it's that we should listen to young people. Their innovation, passion, and determination can work as a wonderful force, as it did for Barbara Rose Johns. In 1951, at the age of 16, Johns organized a student strike protesting school segregation in Prince Edward County, Virginia. The resulting legal case, David v. County School Board of Education of Prince Edward County, became one of the five cases combined into Brown v. Board of Education. Her actions were extraordinary, especially for her age, and foreshadowed the 1963 Birmingham Children's Crusade. The organizing efforts of Barbara Rose Johns 
helped to pave the way for mid-20th century U.S. civil rights movement. Our next speaker, Genevieve Koenigschofer, encapsulates Barbara Rose John Powell's legacy. She is a freshman at University of California, San Diego, and is the chief of staff at GenUp, a student-led organization fighting for education equality. My name is Genevieve Koenigschofer, and I am the chief of staff of GenUp, a youth-led educational advocacy organization dedicated to amplifying student voices and ensuring educational equity. It is my honor today to induct Barbara Rose Johns Powell, one of the bravest and most influential student activists in recent American history, into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Barbara Rose Johns Powell was a Black 16-year-old girl who attended R.R. Moton High School, a segregated Black school that was overcrowded, underfunded, and ill-equipped. So Barbara decided to take matters into her own hands. On April 23, 1951, Barbara led a student strike for equal education and marched to her county courthouse to raise awareness, where she filed the claim Davis versus County School Board of Prince Edward County, which challenged the separate but equal doctrine that was holding her and her black peers back. This case was later consolidated into Brown versus Board of Education, the 1954 landmark decision that declared the separate but equal doctrine unconstitutional. Barbara's case was the largest of these to be consolidated and the only one led and initiated by students. Barbara Rose Johns Powell is an inspiration to youth activists everywhere. As a young black woman, she had been told all her life to sit still and be quiet, to accept her place in society without question. But Barbara had seen a problem in her community and she was determined to fix it. She understood that she deserved an equal education, and she understood the power of youth voices to rise up and demand change. Too often, youth activists are ignored or belittled. We are told that we are too young or naive to understand the problems that we experience firsthand. But Barbara understood that we need to fight for the future we believe in. Whether we fight for human rights, for education, for the earth or for all three, we need to fight for the future that we want to live in. So thank you, Barbara Rose Johns Powell, for fighting for the future we live in today. It is far from perfect, but I and thousands of other student activists are ready to take on the cause in your honor. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joan Johns Cobbs, and I am the sister of Barbara Rose Johns Powell want to be inducted in the National Women's Hall of Fame on December 10th, 2020. It is indeed an honor that Ms. Rita Brock and the National Women's Hall of Fame have chosen my sister Barbara to be one of the inductees. She will be in the company of some phenomenal women. We are humble and proud that you are honoring her in this way. The essence of her heroism will be on display for the world to see in the museum in Seneca Falls, New York. And for that, we are eternally grateful to you. Words cannot adequately express the feelings of immense pride and gratitude shared by my entire family as we prepare for one of the most significant moments in our family's history. In April, 1951, at the age of 16, Barbara led 400 50 students out on a strike for a better school, which ultimately became a part of the Brown versus Board of Education case argued before the Supreme Court. Barbara was a brave, courageous, determined, and fearless young person who saw an injustice and decided to do something about it. She stood up for what she believed and her actions changed the course of the nation when in 1951, the Supreme Court declared that segregated schools were unconstitutional. 
when I think about Barbara, a chapter in the Bible comes to mind. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6, quote, the wolf shall also dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the battling and the calf together, and a little child shall lead them. On behalf of the Johns and Powell families, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts that this dream will become a reality. We cannot thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I truly feel that Barbara's spirit is here with us today. May God bless you all. We are looking forward to the induction ceremony on December 10th. Thank you. Hi, I'm Catherine Eby, Chief Sustainability Officer and VP of National Engagement and Strategy at Duke Energy and President of the Duke Energy Foundation. Our purpose at Duke Energy is to power the vitality of our communities. And I can think of no better way to honor that than to celebrate the extraordinary achievements of these six diverse women. They should be recognized for their important contributions in the fields of education, science and medicine, literature, and music. It is an honor for us to be a part of the National Women's Hall of Fame induction series. Some writers are so extraordinary that their work produces waves of change, not only in the literary world, but in the larger society as well. Toni Morrison not only produced works of incomparable beauty, she introduced new critical sensibilities into our culture, particularly with respect to race and gender. During her lifetime, Toni Morrison was an author, essayist, book editor, and college professor. There were seemingly no limits to her capability. Parenthetically, I am personally thankful to her for persuading me to write my autobiography, which she edited. She introduced black life in the U.S. to people all over the globe. All of us who were touched by her will be forever inspired to transform our worlds. After all, she told us we cannot really be free unless we free somebody else. Adia Kumar is a law student at Northeastern University and is passionate about the works and legacy of Toni Morrison. She will now tell us how Morrison's works have affected her. Hi, my name is Adia Kumar and I am a second year law student at Northeastern University. Fiction has the ability to awaken the mind in fascinating ways and few writers have been as evocative as Toni Morrison. Morrison's work is not simply fiction. It is history, folklore, poetry, and so much more. Reading her novels has had a transformative impact on my life. Her books contain vivid portrayals of the experience of Black women in America and has taught me about intersectionality, the complexity of identity, and most importantly, the strength of Black women. Her most famous novels include Song of Solomon and Beloved, but my favorite is a novel called Sula. In the foreword to this book, Morrison explains how the story is about four women bound by gender and race, presenting a battle among women who are understood to be the least able to win it. Her books highlight a struggle against patriarchy and how race, class, ability, and diverse life circumstances complicate that struggle. In 2020, where we are still fighting for the abolition and freedom of marginalized people, Morrison's imaginative prose and striking words are crucial to the creation of perspective and empathy. Morrison's female characters represent an undying strength that can only be described as inspirational. But it is not just her characters who are inspiring. As the first African-American woman to win the Nobel Prize in Literature, Morrison shattered a seemingly insurmountable ceiling and made it possible for generations of women after her to pursue their dreams. Morrison's talent, eloquence, and wisdom will live on in her timeless works, inspiring women to combine our strengths, identities, and backgrounds to one day attain freedom for all.
It is my honor to accept this recognition on behalf of Grant. I know she would have been delighted to accept this honor herself and would have done so with grace, eloquence, and a touch of humor. But alas, rather than listening to a Nobel Prize winning author speak, we're stuck with me, a high school senior. With this award, she is joining a rather distinguished group of women who have fundamentally changed our world. Some did so with their political struggle, others with their discoveries, and Grant did so with her words. Her novels and other writings were not only masterfully crafted, but challenged us in the way we think about race in everyday life. And so, on behalf of my father, sister, and cousin, thank you. Hi, I'm here on behalf of the entire staff at Opticos Corporation to say that we are proud to support the inductions of six women of achievement into the National Women's Hall of Fame this year. Their tireless and groundbreaking work in the American civil rights, arts, medicine, and sciences have left legacies that are inspirational to us all. Thank you. Extreme outdoor sports have not always been accessible to women, and in particular, women of color. Barriers such as affordability, historical trauma, safety, and a lack of early childhood experiences all contribute to the fact that black Americans today only contribute to 1 to 1.2% of all public land visitors in the U.S. Women like Barbara Hillary have broken through these social barriers to complete an already daunting task, trekking to both the North and South Poles as a senior citizen. Her accomplishments have a lasting impact, far greater than just her physical feats of strength. She has become an outstanding role model for other young people of color who have a passion for adventure and want to explore the great outdoors. Two students reading their essays about Barbara Hillary tonight are Sarita Chowlick, a freshman at Syracuse University, and second is Sybil Montiero from Berger Junior High School. Hi, my name is Sarita Chowlick, and I'm a freshman at Syracuse University. For me, as a young woman of color who loves exploring the outdoors, Barbara Hillary is quite the inspiration. I'm lucky. I've had parents who have always encouraged and enabled me to explore nature, whether it be climbing, hiking, or skiing. However, I know this is not true for everyone. Systematically, the outdoors adventure community is overwhelmingly white, with very few women of color to look up to as inspirations. Barbara Hillary and others like her are changing this narrative, and we are diversifying the outdoors. Her legacy and induction into the National Women's Hall of Fame means so much to me and other young women because she demonstrates perseverance no matter your age, color, or even experience. Barbara Hillary didn't begin her trekking career until she was retired and in her 70s. She shows us that you don't have to be like me, someone who grew up in an outdoorsy family, to go out and explore nature. It's never too late to try something new. The outdoors should be for everyone, not just the privileged few, and Barbara Hillary demonstrated that. And at the end of her life, she spoke up against climate change to ensure that the Arctic will continue to be there for all to enjoy and explore. Thank you, Barbara Hillary, for your inspirational journey for young women like me. And thank you to the National Women's Hall of Fame for making sure her legacy continues on forever. Barbara Hillary was an extraordinary woman who accomplished many things in her life. She battled many hardships before completing the feat she is most known for. She did this after the age of 75. She faced many trials before completing this historical feat. Hillary battled breast cancer at the age of 20 and lung cancer later on in life. She was also a nurse for many years. After retiring from a 55 year nursing career, she decided that she wanted to be an adventurer and began traveling. Shortly after that, she began traveling to places like Manitoba, Canada, and loved the picturesque landscapes. One day, she learned that no African-American woman had ever traveled to the North Pole, so she decided that she would be the first. At the age of 75, after raising over $25,000, she made her trip to the Arctic and became the first African-American woman ever recorded to step foot on the North Pole. 
Five years later, at the age of 79, she broke another record as the first African-American woman to step foot on the South Pole. This makes her the first African-American woman to step foot on both poles. Besides completing those two amazing feats, she had a career in community activism and founded the Arvine Action Association Incorporated and the Peninsula Magazine. As a young girl, this is very inspiring that not only a woman, but a woman of color broke barriers and became the first to do something that no African-American woman had ever done before. Hillary had a hard life, but she rose above her circumstances and serves as an inspiration to all. I'm pleased to say a few words about my friend, Barbara Hillary. I know she would have been grateful and proud to be recognized among a group of such extraordinary women. When Barbara died last November, we lost someone who was the embodiment of determination. While I didn't know Barbara during her historic journeys to the North and South Poles, I did see that determination last year as she set her sights on Mongolia in what would be her final epic adventure. I remember going to visit her as she was preparing for that trip, and there she was, 86 years old, clomping around her house in these enormous snow boots. She wanted to get the feel for walking in them again. I'm going, she said. With that trip too, there were plenty of naysayers, people who doubted that she could pull it off, people who said it was a crazy idea or that she was crazy, that she wasn't strong enough, that she should be more realistic. But when Barbara Hillary said, I'm going, there was no stopping her. Barbara hoped that her life would serve as an inspiration to the next generation, so I'll close with a part of a message she shared with young readers in a book forward. As a young girl in Harlem, I didn't know that I would reach the North and South Poles in my 70s, see a polar bear in its natural habitat, and stand transfixed by vast landscapes of ice and snow. In that same way, you might not know just how you will challenge yourself, push beyond so-called limits, and define your own relationship with the world. I encourage you to ponder, where might your sense of adventure take you? If Barbara's indomitable spirit can in some small way be passed on through the inclusion in the National Women's Hall of Fame, that is a wonderful outcome. Thank you so much. Aretha Franklin's music defined a generation. Who can imagine the Black Liberation Movement unfolding as it did without respect, without you made me feel like a natural woman, both of which added a feminist dimension to Black movements and presaged the development of Black feminism. One of the most powerful feminist anthems was the duet with Annie Lennox, Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves. During her lifetime, the Queen of Soul inspired generations of artists, and her music continues to be inspiration for many young artists today, including Amanda Mina, our musical guest tonight, and whom I had the pleasure of hearing during last year's induction ceremony. Amanda will now tell you how Aretha has impacted her life and music. Amanda Minna is an up-and-coming, versatile singer, recently seen as a finalist on season 13 of America's Got Talent. Amanda is excited at furthering her education at Berkeley College of Music in the fall of 2021. We have already heard Amanda's beautiful vocals tonight when she sang the national anthem, and now we will hear what Aretha Franklin's legacy means to her as a young singer. Additionally, she will be performing an Aretha Franklin tribute medley. So please enjoy, Amanda. Hello everyone. To be in the spirit, we are recording at a beautiful gospel church, a setting reminiscent of Aretha Franklin's early career. As a young artist, I would like to describe what Aretha Franklin means to me. 
Aretha Franklin is a musical legend. Whether in gospel, R&B, or rock and roll, she had extraordinary vocal range and musical intelligence. Listening to her songs, I feel the soul of her music. Yes, Aretha had a beautiful voice, but equally as important when she sang, her entire being came through. This connection brought tears to many. As a young woman, I would also like to thank her for fighting for the causes that had meant so much to all of us. She was a pioneer fighting for racial injustice, equality, and women's rights. It's hard to imagine what she endured in those times during the 1960s and 70s. However, like Martin Luther King, who she knew, she fought with compassion and grace. She used her songs and fame to bring out her message of respect and love to millions around the world. She is truly a meaningful part of our history and paved the way for many people like me in so many different ways. Today, as a part of honoring Aretha Franklin, I am blessed to perform two of her songs. There is a reason why we call Aretha Franklin Queen of Soul. First, I will sing A Natural Woman, and second, I will sing her iconic song, Respect. Both were top hits, which later became anthems of movement for social change. These songs were about empowerment and self-love, a reminder of the dignity and equality that all women everywhere deserve. Thank you.
Greetings from the Franklin family. I'm Kel Franklin, and these are my beautiful children, Grace, Victory, and Jordan. We're so excited to be here today accepting this award on behalf of our grandmother and mother, Miss Aretha Franklin. It's an honor for our grandmother to be inducted into an organization dedicated to not only recognizing, but celebrating the accomplishments of so many great American women, such as Shirley Chisholm, who showed us great resilience, Maya Angelou, who gave us endless creativity, and Bessie Coleman, who never lost her courage. Like these women, my grandma encompasses all these qualities, plus so much more. Our grandmother was not only the queen of soul, she was an activist, a philanthropist, and an avid supporter of education. Her influence was worldwide, and that particular achievement is so difficult for women, especially women of color. My mother was here today. I know that she would be just as excited to receive this award as we are. So the National Women's Hall of Fame, we say, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for joining us in this phenomenal induction ceremony that has added five prominent black women to the National Women's Hall of Fame. In the midst of a global pandemic and all of the pain and suffering it has brought, we have witnessed the emergence of a collective consciousness about the degree to which we are still ensconced in a history defined by colonialism and slavery. Indigenous people, Black, Latinx, and Asian American populations have struggled for justice and equality and have defined the best trajectories toward an inclusive democracy for everyone. As institutions all over the country engage in processes of self-reflection and transformation, I want to thank the National Women's Hall of Fame for emphatically demonstrating that our vision of history will assist us to move in the direction of a more emancipatory future. On behalf of the National Women's Hall of Fame, thank you to our speakers and more. Dr. Davis, Dr. Turner, and Amanda Mena, this event was made more impactful with your participation. Thanks as well to the students for their contributions. You are the future, and we hope the women you spoke about this evening inspired you. Most of all, our thanks to the families of all our inductees for accepting the award in their honor. On the screen, you will see a photo of the medal that all the families will be receiving to honor their loved ones. Additionally, all the inductees mentioned today will have their legacy live on forever at the National Women's Hall of Fame home in Seneca Falls, New York. We welcome all to come visit us at our brand new location on the first floor of the renovated 1844 Seneca Knitting Mill Building. Due to the pandemic, we allow entry with time socially distanced reservations. Do come visit. If you enjoyed the program today and want to learn more about the National Women's Hall of Fame, please sign up for our newsletter or become a member. You can do so via our website, womenofthehall.org. Or for your ease, we will include links to the newsletter subscription and membership registration in a post-event email that you will receive tomorrow morning. In this email, you will also receive links to our online store featuring a variety of merchandise, which make great gifts, more information about each inductee and a recording of tonight's event. Do you wanna become more involved? We welcome support in all forms. We are always looking for more volunteers to help with events such as this, or in person at the museum. Send us an email at womenofthehall at gmail.com to learn more about volunteering. Finally, we would like to thank all of our wonderful donors and sponsors. 
The National Women's Hall of Fame is a not-for-profit educational organization. And because of supporters like you, we are able to honor women of the past, present, and into the future. Please consider donating to the National Women's Hall of Fame so we may continue to host virtual events such as these and to continue our mission of showcasing great women, inspiring all. Before I hand things back over to Dr. Turner to close this evening's event, I stress the importance of nominations. We are only able to induct incredible women if they are nominated and we board members can't nominate. Nominations have to be done by you, by the public. Yes, anyone and everyone is welcome to nominate incredible women in their lives, both living and posthumously. We began the virtual induction series so we could induct women who are deceased prior to the establishment of the National Women's Hall of Fame, overlooked during their lifetimes, and or those who passed away before they were able to be inducted. We hope to continue this series by hosting additional virtual inductions like this one, which will honor other diverse groups of women deserving of recognition, such as Latinx, Asian, Native American, LBGTQ plus women, and many more. Currently, our nominations lack diversity that describes our country's journey. This is an issue of marketing on our part as an institution. And to remedy this, we are reaching out to organizations, educational institutions, and to you to help us close this gap. As an educational institution, it is our duty to create equitable curricula for young generations, and that includes celebrating the stories of all great American women. Please pay attention as I give you a quick tutorial on how to nominate someone to the National Women's Hall of Fame. First, we will cover eligibility. Nominees may be contemporary or historical. A historical nominee is someone who has died prior to the date of their nomination. There is no time limit on what makes a nominee historical. All must be citizens of the United States, either by birth or naturalization. Their contributions should be of national or global importance and of enduring value. This means individuals whose contributions are local or regional will not qualify, and we ask you to focus on the change that has been created by the nominee and what their lasting impact is on society. Once you submit the nomination form, your nomination will be reviewed by our staff. They will ensure all nomination forms are complete and will send them to the panel of national judges. This panel consists of distinguished citizens and representatives from respected national organizations. We look for knowledgeable judges every year and we would appreciate your ideas for good judges as well. Each inductee has a group of several nominees to judge and scores nominees on the basis of the value of the nominee's contributions to the development of the United States, the significant national or global impact of their achievements, and the enduring value of their achievements. Every nominee is judged by three judges and is judged for two cycles. Your completed form is the primary tool that is used to determine the merits of your nominee for induction to the National Women's Hall of Fame. Please be as detailed and concise as possible in your nomination form. Nominations are reviewed and considered on a continuing basis. However, there are cutoff dates prior to a scheduled induction ceremony to allow time for judging. Nominations received after the cutoff date will be considered for the following induction cycle. We encourage you to begin nominating. If you would like a detailed tutorial of how to access the nominations form on the National Women's Hall of Fame website, stay online after the ceremony has ended. Natalie Rudd will show you where on the website you can locate the nomination form. Thank you. The fabric of American history is a patchwork of beautiful and unique persons held together by a strong but also fragile thread of democracy. 
In order to understand our history and keep the strength of our democracy alive, we must continue to embrace the diversity of our country by promoting inclusion and equity as tonight's program has done. This has been a marvelous evening and I have been honored to be a part of it. It has been, it has been truly inspiring to hear from our special presenters and the wise and beautiful words of Dr. Angela Davis. Also hearing our inductee stories has added another important and often overlooked piece to the American patchwork history. Each of the inductee stories touched me in special ways. The grit of Mary Church Terrell in her fight for suffrage in an organization that quite frankly sidelined her efforts brought the power of the vote to many women of color. The boldness and leadership beyond her years of Barbara Rose John Powell exemplified the impact young voices can have on progress in our country. Henrietta Lack's contribution to science and medicine with her HeLa cell line has been critical to many advances in medicine, but more importantly, her story shed light on the inadequacies of informed consent and the abuse of persons of color at the hands of majority medicine. Barbara Hillary's amazing life's journey to the polls proved that age is not a barrier when one is determined, but her elevation of the study of geology in medicine has inspired a field that truly improved the life of Americans' older persons. And finally, the music and strength of character Aretha Franklin brought to the world throughout her life shall live on through the ages. She was very special throughout my life also. Our lives are all better because of these amazing women of color. May we cherish their memories and pass their stories on to future generations. So on behalf of the League of Women Voters of the United States and the National Women's Hall of Fame, we'd like to thank you for celebrating with us tonight and may you all remain safe and healthy this season. We conclude with a poem by Toni Morrison, Eve Remembering. I tore from a limb fruit that had lost its green. My hands were warmed by the heat of an apple. Fire red and humming, I bit sweet power to the core. How can I say what it was like? The taste. The taste undid my eyes and led me far from the gardens planted for a child to wildernesses deeper than any master's call. Now these cool hands guide what they once caressed. Lips forget what they have kissed. My eyes now pool their light better summit to see. I would do it all over again. Be the harbor and set the sail. Loose the breeze and harness the gale. Cherish the harvest of what I have been. Better the summit to scale. Better the summit to be. you'll begin by going to our website, womenofthehall.org. Once you come at our homepage, you will go to the menu. From here, scroll down to the tab, Women of the Hall. On this page, you will be able to see all of the women who have been inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. You can search them using our various search capabilities at the top of the page. Once you've explored our inductees and you feel that there is somebody that should have been nominated or inducted that has not been yet, please nominate them. To nominate, you'll go over here to the Nominate tab. By clicking on this page, it will take you directly to the submission form. Here you can see samples of successful nominations, instructions, these instructions were already given by Kate, and then it will take you to the actual online nomination form. First, we ask for your information as the nominator. We would like to know your name, email address, phone number, who you are nominating, and their field of achievement. 
We ask for your contact information so we may contact you if we need more information or if your nominee has been accepted to be inducted to the National Women's Hall of Fame. Next, we ask for the nominee's information. We ask for their name, their occupation, field of achievement, or title, for what achievements are they best known, their date of birth, and their date of death, if applicable, and their date of naturalization, if applicable, meaning if they were not born in the United States, when did they become a citizen? We then ask for their biographical information. In this form, you will not be able to save any of your work, so we rec recommend that you write your answers in a separate document and copy and paste them into these boxes before submitting. We also ask that you answer all of these questions in the narrative form, opposed to bullet points. We would like to hear about the nominee in your words. So to start with the biography, we ask that you provide essential biographical information about the nominee. This can include their education and training, their professional work history, major accomplishments and or contributions, and their awards and honors. Please do not attach another bio, resume, or article as a substitute for using this form. We then ask you to answer three questions. In your own words, please show how the nominee's contributions are relevant and valuable to society. We ask that you please do not repeat any of the biographical information above. In the first question, we ask that you please describe the ways in which the nominee's contributions have been of the greatest value for society and or how they've empowered women. Question two, we ask you to describe the significant national and or global impact of the nominee's achievements. And finally, we ask you to please present evidence that the nominee's achievements have or will have enduring value. Please focus your narrative on the change that has been or will be created and how that change is expected to last over time. And finally, once you feel that your nomination form is complete and ready to go, you may hit submit. Once your form is submitted, you will receive a confirmation email. And then your nomination is off to our judging panel. Thank you for nominating at the National Women's Hall of Fame.